This was Governor Murphy's sixth State of the Union, uh, State of the State speech, while it was the third for Governor Kathy Hochul. Joining us this morning with a recap of the speeches and how it will impact residents is political commentator J.C. Polanco. So good to see you, J.C. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Good morning. So let's begin with what these speeches were, right? They were so important for both states, for New York and New Jersey, and a lot to unpack here. But I want to begin with what was actually left unsaid and not addressed, really, and that is the all-encompassing migrant crisis that's impacting both states. Rare, not mentioned at all with uh, Governor Kathy Hochul or Governor Phil Murphy. Why do you think they steered clear of the issue here? Oh, well, one of the major reasons they steered clear was they can't do anything about it. Mm. I mean, you can't, you can't do anything, and neither can the people in front of you. The only thing that it could do is alienate your base and the overwhelming majority of elected officials in front of you. And considering that this is an important presidential year, an important congressional year, you don't want to alienate your base. Uh, and, and keep in mind that the migrant issue was at the forefront of one very important character in the back of that room in New York, especially, Mayor Eric Adams. Yeah, well, the governor did say that she, she was going to speak about it later when she discussed the budget. Um, we also wanted to ask you, that, uh, what about the, gov the governor, uh, Phil Murphy, not talking about the transit, which is facing a huge budget shortfall right now? He also didn't mention the huge issue, congestion pricing. Why do you think he was playing it so safe there, especially since this is his last term in office? Well, again, I go back to my first point. Is we can't do anything about it. The federal government said you could do it. New York is, is, is ramming it down the throats of all New Jersey residents that need to be able to come into New York City. They're going to pay a lot more. If the governor mentions it, he's willfully admitting, hey, I'm weak. There's nothing I could do about this. In addition, what are you going to do about this in an election year that's so important for New Jersey residents, especially those that want to retain, uh, to, that want to win over the majority of the House, uh, especially those Democrats in combative districts? These are the same folks that were pushing for this. These are the same folks that were saying that this will come back climate change, that this would help out the environment, that this is going to be very important to bring a stable climate back into the region. What are you doing by reminding voters that the same folks that you're supporting were the ones that are supporting this, and it's going to cost you hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars a year? So because of the fact that they can't do anything about it without alienating his base, it's one of the major reasons why him and Governor Hochul didn't touch many of those important topics you mentioned, Hazel. Right, but, but, but on the flip side of that, devil's advocate, can't the opposing side, can't the Republicans now use that and say, well, it wasn't a priority for them. They didn't mention it in their state of the state speeches. We're heading into an election year, and here's why we're going to hammer home these key issues, right? That's what Republicans do best. They zero in on an issue. Bail reform was the issue last time in New York, and they hammer it home each and every time. You know, before becoming an independent, I was a Republican for many years, and I have to tell you, they're going to do that anyway. I was in those rooms. That's, that's an important part of the campaign. You've got to remind, remind folks that it was bail reform, that it was this idea about uh, getting cars out of New York City, uh, the, the idea of raising taxes. You're going to mention those things anyway. Why would a governor, uh, who's a Democrat, make those issues in the most important speech of the year, mm. that first speech in front of the legislature? I hear you. This is where you want to galvanize your troops. This is, a, this is a head coach giving a good speech in the middle of halftime on a football game. You don't want to remind the folks, you know, what's wrong with your team. You want to just remind them of what's great. Unfortunately, the devil's in the details. That's why we don't hear about migrants. That's why we don't hear about what's happening with the mm. large population decrease in New York. Yeah, we did hear about uh, the illegal, illegal smoke shops. I mean, she's talking about cracking down on those smoke shops. They're, they've become kind of a nuisance here in the city. So what do you think lawmakers are going to do to respond to that? More enforcement, possibly? We're seeing it now. You know, there, there are a lot of uh, issues here, in, in, in especially in places where I'm from, like the Bronx, where we have illegal smoke shops pop all over. And it's becoming a major nuisance. Not only are children going in there, purchasing marijuana, getting addicted to THC, uh, but we have another problem that I think is going to come to light. And that's the issue of legal dispensaries that are opening up literally across the street from playgrounds and schools across New York City. Why? Because elected officials looked the other way and didn't address that issue. It's, it's going to be the second phase of this. But these illegal dispensaries are, ca are causing a major problem because they're unregulated. And then you have legal dispensaries that are doing the right thing, spending millions of dollars, and are competing against these illegal weed shops uh, in, in many parts of the city where it's the last thing the yeah. residents need. You know, JC, so th I hear what you're saying about th that this being like, here's the wins, and it's and now we got to move forward to the next chapter, and that next chapter is the budget, right? And that's where the devil's in the details here and what they need to ask for from the federal government and, and so on and so forth. So 
what comes next for both of these governors, the big ticket items that they need to include in their budget? This is where it's going to get interesting. Uh, both of these governors are not in tune with the base of their parties. The base of their parties is increasingly progressive. So when the details come out of the budget, we're going to see um, important details that are going to be fought about, especially between staff members behind the scenes that they may not want to air out. We may see something on bail reform. There was no discussion on bail reform. It's a big issue still for many New Yorkers. We didn't see what's going to happen with the migrant crisis in New York City. Are we, are we going to really uh, take out all of these folks and send them back elsewhere? Are we going to take many of these migrants out of housing, which is something that New York City has to do because it's not enough space? That's when you're going to get all of how you make sausages, right? Mm. No one wants to know how you make a sausage, mm -hmm. but at the end, everybody loves a sausage. <laughs> That's an interesting analogy, Jason. There's your quote. There's your quote of the morning. I hope, I, I, hope that, I hope that doesn't go uh, uh, <laughs> viral. <laughs> Time to make the sausages. JC Polanco, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Always appreciate thank your you. time.